himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near, and, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. Hallelujah. The true godly self-restraint. We see here that Joseph, after months and months of serving as the Prime Minister of Egypt, meeting his brothers after years that he has been sold into Egypt, he couldn't contain himself. He could not control himself. Yeah, he had to do uh, what he can just to get back at his brothers for selling him. All because of them being jealous because of how blessed he is with the gift that he has of, of interpreting dreams. So we see here at the scene that Joseph, as I said, could not contain himself. That he had to let all the servants out so that he could be alone with his brothers. And knowing how deep and hard Joseph had suffered, seeing his brothers, but his brothers not recognizing him, he had to reveal himself, his true godly color. I am Joseph. I am the brother that you sold to Egypt. Yes, the brothers, they, they couldn't believe it. Even the youngest of the youngest, uh, Benjamin, they couldn't believe it until Joseph had to remove this uh, Egyptian cap off his head. And uh, I've, I've seen uh, the movie based on this called Joseph and the King of Dreams. Where Joseph removed uh, this uh, Egyptian cap and revealed himself to his brothers. To the point that he couldn't control himself. And that's the Hebrew word for restraint. Afak. Meaning control. Amen? Amen? The word restraint. In fact, that's actually where the name restraining order came from. Amen? Uh, Brother Columbus, you, you know what I'm talking about. Restraining order against someone who is bothering you. Amen? Amen. And, and we say this in our prayer that we 
we call upon a restraining order against the enemy. Amen? Somebody, somebody said that an orgy. Amen? So this is what we understand from this. The first thing that we understand is that we ought to force ourselves to reveal the true glory of God. Amen? Sometimes we have to force ourselves. Sometimes, maybe all the time, we have to force ourselves to walk and show God's true, God's true glory in our lives. Amen? Amen? And that's actually what, what I did throughout this whole weekend in which you hear me sound like this. This is not how I sound like. Amen? Amen. And the second thing that we learn from this is that God is not forceful. Amen? He is not forceful. He's not forceful because he is slow to anger. We can find that in Psalm 103, verse 8. We can read that quickly. Psalm 103, verse 8. Uh, you can uh, read it if you find it. Hallelujah. Wow. The Lord is gracious. Verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. This is David expressing his true glory to God and referring him as not a forceful God. Because he is slow to anger. Amen? So, when you are showing your true godly colors to God, keep in mind, you're walking in his glory. And you understand that he's not a forceful God. Hallelujah. My second key point, a revelational providence. Let's go back to Genesis. Uh, I want someone to read from verses 7 to 11. Genesis 45, verses 7 to 11. And God sent, and God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth mm -hmm. and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Now it was not you who sent me here, but God. Mm -hmm. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Yes. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Gosh. And you shall be near to me, uh, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your hair, herds, all that you have. Here I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to birth. For there are still about five years of famine. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Joseph is reminding uh, his brothers that that he already knows that there is famine in that part of Canaan. And we see that the brothers, they've been going to Egypt uh, just to buy some grain to sustain their father Jacob. So this is why Joseph asked, does my father still live? Now, at that time, Jacob was still living, especially as, as an old man. Who knows how old he was? If, it's, if he lived over a hundred years, then that's the Abrahamic covenant. Amen? Amen. Now, Joseph is reminding his brother. 
brothers that as soon as possible go and get our father let him come and see me thinking that uh, he, he was killed by wolves but not knowing that he's still living that he's been around Egypt and serving as the prime minister so he makes this declaration saying that every generation has to receive a revelational providence. Amen? Amen. That God will always provide even in the season of dryness. Yes, and the word provide in Hebrew is cool. Cool. It's spelled K-U-L, not the cool as in C-double-O-L. Amen? And it means comprehend. Comprehend or contain. So what we learn in, in this is that in a season of dryness and with our faithful works, God will provide. Amen? And I like this song that I always hear. Uh, I think it was Elevation worship that sang this song. Uh, it says, Jaira, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough. And that is referring to the Jehovah Jaira. Jehovah Jaira. In the season of dryness, God will provide. Amen. Amen. The second thing we learn from this is that we should not be worried about the little issues because God knows our needful issues. Amen? Amen. We can find that in Matthew 6 from verse 31 and 32. Yeah, we can read that uh, quickly. Matthew 6 Verse 31 and 32. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 31 to 32. And this is Jesus speaking. Covenant 
Amen. And and yes, uh, you know, colors, you know, like as a child growing up, you know, I, I've always, you know, loved playing with crayons, you know, just coloring and coloring like different sort of objects, especially when I'm, when I'm drawing something. And that's actually something that I did with all the mics that you're seeing here, how I labeled them, like just different colors, finding find out which one is which, which mic is this, especially uh, this one that I'm holding. For us Christians, we ought to show the true godly colors, amen? amen. Not the colors of the enemy, but the colors of God, amen? amen? Last, uh, well, yeah, this past January, I went to uh, a wedding that I was invited to. And uh, I showed up, uh, you know, just, you know, I, I had to dress nice. Um, I mean, I already got a haircut, and I had to uh, find out what I'm going to wear to the wedding. And the first option was for me to wear clerical shirt. Amen? Amen? So I had to uh, show up with, uh, with my full suit and my clerical shirt and I went into uh, the church where uh, they had the wedding. And the clergy uh, that were officiating the wedding, they couldn't even recognize me. They couldn't recognize me until I got up to uh, the rector of uh, the church. He was only he was the first person to recognize who I was because he was surprised that I was already ordained. And then after the ceremony, other clergies they found out that this is uh, Chibulia. This is me, like already I've been ordained. They were surprised to see me as a fully ordained clergy. To the point they started asking me, oh, which diocese, which, which diocese were, were you ordained in? It's a diocese of God, but, but I literally told them uh, it's, it's the Okiwe diocese. Then they started asking me, which, which diocese, which, which are Okiwe diocese, north or south? Now I know about Okiwe South, the diocese, and I know about the Okiwe North, but they don't call it the Okiwe North Diocese. They renamed it as Isimba North Diocese. That's the diocese with uh, St. John's Anglican Church in Abaja, and the diocese ran by our bishop, uh, Godson Ukawa. Uh, if you remember uh, Venerable Chris and Lelia that visited our church, he, he is under that diocese. The diocese of Isimbano, known as the Okiwe North. So they just started asking me, like, which Okiwe diocese are you ordained in? I told them, the main Okiwe. The main Okiwe. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Not north or south, the man ran by my bishop, yes. Edward Oswebu. Yes. Yes. So they were just so surprised to see me yes. as a clergy. Like they, as soon as they saw the, the collar on, shocking yes, sir. to them. Yes. That's the even even, uh, even uh, they, there was a bishop that also came. Uh, who's a suffragan bishop for the Diocese of the West, uh, uh, Bishop Celestine Iroda. Uh, well, I don't want to mention names, but uh, but he, he was also amazed uh, to see me ordained. Amen. 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 And this is just history that younger generations will. Amen. That is the importance of showing your true godly colors. Amen. What believers ought 
to know when revealing the godly true color. Let's go to second, well, first Corinthians. Not second, first Corinthians. 15, uh, from verse 46 to the end. Uh, someone can read that. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth. Made of dust, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as he was born the image of the man of dust, he shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, do I continue? Uh, yeah, finish up verse uh, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised in corruption and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Amen. What believers ought to know in revealing the godly true color. The Apostle Paul is reminding the Corinthian church in his first letter about how they ought to appear, especially physically and spiritually. Amen? Amen. We see here that verse uh, 46 says it all that the spiritual is not first, but natural. And afterwards, it is spiritual. And why? Because the first man is natural. But the second man is spiritual. Amen? Amen? First man, Adam. Second man, Jesus. And in that, um, us as natural human beings, we carry the image of God. That's where the Greek word image, tupos, meaning figure. We carry the, the figure and the image of of God. Amen? Amen? And I use the word image, uh, for example, uh, with our phones that, that we use today. Uh, our phones always has the camera lens in front of your screen. That way, if you take a selfie of yourself, the picture will come out as a reflection of your face in the screen. Amen? Amen. So we carry... God's image as, as this spiritual being living in us. Hallelujah. Amen. So three things on what believers ought to know when revealing the godly true color. The first thing that we learn is from verses 46 and 47. The first spirit is the first man that lived on earth while the second man came from heaven. Amen? Amen? Like I said before, the first man, Adam, lived on earth. But the second man, Jesus, came from heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we ought to know that the spirit of man, the, of the first man is natural. Amen? Amen? And therefore when we seek Jesus we, we, we have that image in him. Amen? Amen? 
The second thing we learned is that the second one is from verse uh, 46. Man was made from dust physically so that we can live heaven. Amen? That almost right. Thus, a man has made, man was made from dust physically so that we can live heaven. And uh, in, in the next few weeks or a few days from now, we'll be celebrating the Lent season. And we will be uh, celebrating Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday. To signify that we are nothing but ashes. We're, we're born as dust and we will die as dust. That way we can live heaven. Amen? And the last one is from verse 49. If we were born with dust image, we bear the image of God. Amen? Like I said earlier, when we're born to dust, we leave as dust. Amen? And I did go to a, a funeral of a, a young friend of mine uh, that I mentioned in the prayer here uh, that passed on in a car accident that caused the fire. They never survived. And I went there uh, so the mother that he left behind, the sister that left behind, uh, she's actually friends with uh, Chioma. And to, to even make it so sad, I had to console the wife and two daughters that he left behind. And you know, knowing that someone that could die in a car accident that will cause a fire, you know, it was so amazing to me, but it gave me an understanding that if you are born with dust, you leave as dust. Because it is a part of life. Amen? So if we were born with dust, we bear the image of God. Even when we die, the dust is left and we carry the image of God from his kingdom. Amen? The prophet Moses, who wrote Genesis, King David in Psalms, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which we read in, in Matthew, taught us that we ought to force ourselves to reveal the true glory of God, and we should not be worried about the little issues because God knows our needful issues. Because God is not forceful, but he is slow to anger. And in a season of dryness, and with our faithful works, God will provide. The Apostle Paul that we read in 1 Corinthians gave us facts on what we ought to know when revealing the true color the true godly color in God. Therefore, it is important to be real with God and show our true colors that God will show his. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, referring back to the rainbow uh, in Noah's time, God showed his true color to Noah. Why? Because Noah showed his true colors to God. So if we are here and living as Christians, we ought to show our true colors as the believers, as the sons and daughters of God. Amen? Amen. I'll close with an anonymous quote. Uh, yeah, I, I chose an anonymous quote. I, I, I might do this again. Show your true colors. Everyone want to see that. Not the fake, but the real you. Amen? Amen. Uh, if, 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 if I ever research this, I will know this was said by a black person. Amen? Amen. Show your true colors. 
Everyone wants to see it. Everyone wants to see who you are. Not the fake, but the real you. Just like uh, Miley Stewart, who revealed herself and told herself that I'm going to perform not as Hannah Montana, but the real me. Amen? So show your true colors to God. And he will be glorified in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for your word. Thank you, oh God, for giving us the reminder to show our true colors to you. And that you will show your true colors to us, oh God. The same colors that you showed to Noah. Lord, we ask that it will be revealed and that you will continue to make this covenant in our lives in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us even in the rest of the service today. We ask that you will be glorified and lifted up. We pray in Jesus' name.